Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this exercise, we are going to tackle the challenge of hand independence like this channel tends to do very often. Uh, hand independence and arpeggios, I guess, are our more popular videos. But this one uses hand independence with a slightly different perspective where we look at the same melodic pattern in the bass clef or the left hand but we displace it through different subdivisions as you may have heard in the intro video with respect to a very fixed chord progression which I'm going to first teach you in the right hand. So a very important way to tackle hand independence on the piano is to play the pulse, how the human body pretty much moves to the music which doesn't have to necessarily follow a time signature, it can just go with the flow, you know, so even if it's a 7 by something or a 5 by something or a 3 by something, you still move the same way. All humans in that room will move the same way, of course, if the music or the musician is good. So, you're going to play the pulse in one hand, which is very important, while doing something else in the other hand. And in this particular exercise, we are going to play the pulse as chords in the right hand, and we are going to play a very simple four note bass line with a lot of displacement variations. Now, if you read music, or even if you don't read music and want to visualize things better, we have handwritten notes by yours truly, written for you, waiting for you on our Patreon page. In addition to that, each of the variations I'm going to tell you with the chords, the names, the notation, the staff notation, I will also be waiting for you on Patreon in the same post along with the MIDI files which will allow you to just double click it and open it into any kind of a virtual MIDI player of some sort like Synthesia and the like. And also it will be awesome if you could hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So we are taking the key of E minor and I'm going to give you four chords in that particular key. Okay, let me play them and then teach you. What's going on here? We start with the normal traditional E minor chord but played in second inversion that will be B E G B E G and then we go A E F sharp A E F sharp It's a very unique chord actually but it, it it's part of the umbrella of E minor which is E F sharp G A B C D E E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, which is the E natural minor, a relative of G major, by the way. So, one sharp, F sharp. So, the first chord, B, E, G, then A, E, F sharp, and then C, E, A, which is an A minor chord in first inversion. C, E, A, where A, the, the root is on top. And then, coming back to the original E minor, so E minor. And then the F sharp on top with A, E, F sharp. It's almost like a suspension of sorts. Right? Almost like an E sus2 with a sus4. I don't even know what to call this. Anyway, leave it. So, E minor, B, E, G, A, E, F sharp. And then C, E, A, B, E, G. Okay, and we do each chord four times. And I like a nice staccato synthy sound as I call it. Synthy in the sense reminds me of some glam rock songs back in the 80s. And to make it more interesting, maybe the last hit could be legato instead of staccato. Check this out. Creates a nice flow. gets the body to move, I feel. Create that articulation. Slowly. Little slower. Right? So, 
That's about your right hand and I'm keeping the left hand or the bass clef really simple. It's just the first three notes of the natural minor scale over a four note melodic pattern which is E, F sharp, G, E and all of these four uh, notes or hits would be played as quavers or eighth notes. So one and two and rest. Okay, so the first variation would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Nothing at the 3 and the 4, even though 1 and 2 and is covered by these 4 guys. Uh, 3 and 4 and will not have anything. Which gives us the motivation as this lesson keeps journeying forward to utilize all those missing spots. And we try and push this fragment or this motif. We will push that figure up and up and up and later and later in the bar and see how that goes. And we are going to divide our beats into two equal units. So one and two and three and four and and signifies the division of two and introduces things like quavers into the party. One and two and three and this is how I want you to count it. Play along. One and two and three and one and two and three and four and Okay, and now uh, we have to do it with the right hand. So before you actually get that left hand, a quick trick would be to try and sing that. By now you can kind of do... Okay, you know the melody. Simple. Three notes. Okay, starting at the one, three, four, one and two. And so now take that away. Bring back your chords. Slow that down. The chords are basically still playing up a, a pulse, so keep it a bit slow. And these pulses are crotchets or quarter notes, which last one count over a bar. And now we need to bring in the bass clef. Before we do, we sing. Pa -da -da -da. Pa -da -da -da. Make it a melody. You may find this to be a bit of a challenge. If you do, maybe do it with one chord. Don't change. And as you journey forward, you then go. When you're ready, after you've done singing, get them together. Keep singing if you wish. Or count. One and two and three and four, which is a bit tricky, at least for me to count. One and two and three. Same chord loop, same melody. Speed that up. Try to get the articulation in the right hand. There we go. Okay, so now we are going to do a lot of displacement variations or permutations and all that this is going to do is the right hand will not be displaced throughout the lesson all that I've taught you in the right hand is over finished some students I find and trust me I have some telekinesis I can probably see you right now some students tend to avoid playing the piano with me while I'm teaching. I would recommend you to get your keyboards out or pianos out or go to your instrument and play along. Or you can even pause the video. You can even slow down the video using the YouTube slowing down features. And you can also keep the notation in front of you. Try to be prepared as you play with me in this lesson. So the right hand continues to do its thing. The left hand now is going to slowly displace 
the figure which is the four note phrase we started at the one so what is after one and of one so one and two and three and four and one and two and three first you want to do that one and two and three one you want to count everything and whack the and two ends one and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and four and one and two with the right hand and a good strategy would be now to count the ends with the right hand so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and now we do it at the end and two and three and two and three and two and three and two and three and two pum pum pa ba bum pa ra ba rum 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 and two and three parabaru parabaru and once you sing it try to execute it slow it down just to get and three just to count one and two and three and four and one and two few things you could do you, you know you could close your eyes and play that tends to help with the independence or the coordination because at this stage you know what your fingers know what they are doing so you don't necessarily need to look at your piano so just feel the notes feel them colliding with each other at those specific beats earlier you did at the one now need to also let loose a bit with your body and let whatever natural reactions need to happen happen you need to play freely you need to be free with your body and mind when you play so uh, if your eyes do something weird or if your head does something weird as you've seen in a lot of my videos i guess all musicians have a way of feeling the music sometimes we just close our eyes but sometimes for these subdivisions you may want to do something more you could kind of angle your body a bit you know open your eyes close your eyes move your head sing whatever it takes to get the job done okay so that was the end of the one uh, next we just move everything to the two of the bar so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and let's see how that goes two and three and four and two and three and four ta ra 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 pa re 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 pa ra re re slow that down one pa ra 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 singing it for pa ra re ra pa ra re ra pa ra re ra one and two and three and four one and two and three and four one and two and one and two and three and four. remember the chords are going to change it may be tough for you to actually count as you saw i may have made a few errors while saying it but you need to feel the beats which you can do internally so that's the 2 let's now do 2.5 or the end of the 2 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 2 and 3 and 4 remember it's just consecutive notes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 3 and 4 and 1 so let's see how that goes
So two and is over. What's next? Well, three. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and three and four and two and three and four and three and four and so back back to the chords. next we can do 3.5 which is and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 4 and 1 now the challenge with 3 and and obviously the upcoming 4 and the 4 and is that they are going to eat into the next bars 1 or 2 because you've displaced them beyond the bar so they go into the second bar as you'll see with the notation so you go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and that's normal that's at 3 then we did 1 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 3 and 4 and I like the fact that that E comes in with a bang at the one of the next bar very groovy 1 and 2 keep your chords in the right hand or keep the same chord until you've got the independence right parabaram 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 at the end of the 3 and 4 and 1 and 4 and 1 and 4 and 1 and 4 and 1 with the left parabaram so we've done 3 and then we do when we go into 4 1 and 2 4 and 1 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 3 4 and 1 and so 4 and 1 and and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and just with one chord 4 and 1 and para param para raram para raram para raram para independence will challenge you in many ways it's not that you won't be able to play you'll be able to play but then the notes of your chord will get jumbled or all go all over the all over the place and that's the point of this exercise to push you to develop your hand independence in a very sort of mathematical way if you think about it you started with a four note grouping starting on one now we've gone up to the four and before we conclude the lesson why should we forget four and or the last beat of the uh, a, a eight beat cycle or four beat cycle divided into two eighth notes so and four and one so that's at the end of the four Keep that going a bit slow now. that's at end of the 4 and 1 and 2 so i guess the 4 and the 4 and a half even i find it quite tricky sometimes to do it the other reason why we tend to find it tricky is not 
only because the hit points of the two hands are at different spots it's because there's different information to play so there are many ways to tackle hand independence you can do it with melody in the right hand chord pattern in the left hand uh, which is traditional you can do it in this case with a bass line in the left hand and the right hand playing the chords with a specific pulse like pattern uh, which complements very well so you hope you guys find the lesson useful hope you can use it in your daily practice and do consider getting the notation as well from patreon you'll get my handwritten notes as well in a structured manner and let me before i conclude the lesson let me just play all the variations once and try and do it as slow as i possibly can at the one now of 1 three and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 now and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 2 and a half the four now before i conclude we are also on instagram you can follow me on jason zack and if you'd like to record yourself playing any of these exercises feel free to do so make a reel or a story or whatever is available on that particular platform you can even tag me at jason zack that'll be awesome to see what you can do or at least you can come up with some weird faces while doing the whole thing Right guys thanks a ton for watching the video don't forget to subscribe leave us a comment with what you thought and what you'd like to learn in the future and we'll be happy to prepare that for you cheers and see you in the next one